Hi everybody, Deborah Dickinson here. Thank you for being on my channel and thank you for being on this journey with me and Bandit. Today I have five friends that's going to help me explain some of the nomad terminology to you. Of course, some of it is not in the Webster's Dictionary to be exactly defined, but we're going to share our understanding of it and hopefully it will help you. Stay tuned! <music> So everybody kind of wonders sometimes, what is the difference, for example, in urban camping, dry camping, stealth camping, boondocking, mooch docking? What do all of those terms mean? Well, I am going to let my friends take it away and start telling you about those, and then I'm going to come back and wrap it up with a few more hints, tips, and tricks on nomad terminology. So check them out. Okay, so I've asked you to help me with my video, Nomad Terminology, and you wanted to define boondocking, but Tracy already beat you to that, yeah. right? That little stinker. Uh -huh. she, she grabbed that definition before you got a chance. Would you be willing to tell my viewers what your understanding is of urban camping? Urban camping is not really camping. It's just getting a place to sleep for the night. That's all it is. In, a, in an approved place. In an approved place. Some Walmarts let you, uh, Home Depots, Cracker Barrels. I've only did Home Depot and Walmart once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not, convenient. You know, you go into a long trip, you know, and it, say it's 500, 800 mile trip to go somewhere. And you're not going to do that in all one day. So you need a place to stop and take a nap <laughs> yeah. to go sleep and that's what that's yeah. what it's for a layover a layover is kind yeah. of what I, what I say. one day layover not yeah. a week layover and, not, and not, somewhere not to take out your camp chairs and your, <laughs> your pullouts and your barbecues <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's to a, keep it clean yeah and, and and hopefully if you can or need to or want to go in and and, and get some shopping done always pay always them, pay them back for that that courtesy always, yeah so, yeah sure yeah. absolutely well, thank you. That was a perfect definition. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so tell us about dry docking. <laughs> dry docking. It's kind of like boondocking. Um, you're out in a campground facility rather than out in nature itself on a dirt road. Uh, dry camping is you go and you find your spot. You have a designated spot. It usually has a, like a campfire ring. Sometimes they'll have a picnic table. Not usually, though. Um, but you go and you put your little number and if there's a fee you put it in an envelope, you know, and put it in the slot. Um, I prefer dry camping because I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat. Um, <laughs> you know, when you travel alone, solo, especially being female, um, just going down a dirt road and finding some place. I'm getting used to it, but I'm still not there yet. So I, I try to find the dry dock campgrounds and sometimes you find them in an RV spot that they just don't have a dump, you know, the faucets for water and the dump hookups. Um, sometimes they'll be like a vaulted, uh, lucky outhouse kind of toilet that I would never use in a million years, but they're there. Um, but it's, it's a nice facility that, you know, you just don't feel out and alone. You know, there's neighbors. Okay, so stealth camping is pretty much what you would imagine. And, and people often think of it like, um, I'm gonna have a cargo van, I'm gonna put a ladder on the top, I'm gonna put a vest in the front seat, and I'm gonna look like I'm not sleeping in my rig. And that's basically what stealth is. In a more sensible approach is just don't draw attention to your rig. And this would apply primarily in more urban city settings. Now, this doesn't apply to me because I camp on public lands. And for me personally, I want people to know that I'm in the van. And I want them to know, I want them to think that there's somebody in the van when they're at a Walmart or somewhere else, because um, you know, I don't know if you've heard it, but there are stories about people who are have stealth rigs and people try to break into them. They see the contractor van and they go, there's tools inside, let me break in and steal the tools. So it kind of cuts both ways. And the other thing I would say is, you know, I did this, um, I don't want to misrepresent myself, but I was, uh, uh, a patrol trainer for a volunteers and policing team and I was a non-sworn individual but I had a badge uh, and, and, and I had my uniform and we had the police cars and I would train others primarily retired citizens in the area what to look out for in the community 
and we could we can spot your stealth rig a mile away so don't think for a second that we don't know what it is we can glance at your tags at 100 yards away and know exactly if you're from out of state or not but so the best i can say is um you don't want people to uh, to call the police to say there's a suspicious van in my neighborhood because then there's an obligation from the police to actually go show up and then knock on your door um other than that just keep your rig clean i mean unless you're in a full-blown rv which there's no stealth available in a big rv just keep your rig clean and make sure that there's you know people in the, in the neighborhood don't look at your rig and go why is it dirty why is it dusty why is it rusty just take care of your stuff and i think you'll find you're, you're gonna have a, a lot fewer problems so anyway like i said doesn't apply to me if there's anybody in law enforcement watching this comment because you, your feedback is immensely valuable but uh yeah that's it so tracy what the heck is boondocking boondocking is camping in areas like blm land that is not a formal campground has no services but is allowed so you have to have your own water pack out your own trash deal with your own toilet facilities but you are allowed to camp there and there usually isn't a fee and is there usually a term? Some of them can be two weeks. Some of them can be longer. Occasionally, it's only two weeks out of a whole year. And even I'm seeing some that are seven days or 10 days. And... Yeah, yeah, that's true. I recently ran across one that was eight days, which I thought was funny. Kind of a funny number. <laughs> yeah, it's eight like, days. How, how do you track that? Yeah. And if you are out boondocking and you never see a ranger, can you stay longer? You could. But if you if you know you shouldn't, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, because I'll tell you what, they, they're now using aerial uh, uh, flyovers. And uh, what I have known some people has happened to them is they thought they could stay longer and they end up just with a ticket for the days and it's a quite a hefty fine. That's good to know. Yeah. I find that it's just not that big a deal to move. Yeah. Usually they'll let you come back in a couple of weeks and it's easy. I I'm bored at the end of two weeks anyway. <laughs> no, no, we want a new backyard. That's right. Okay, Any? Um, it, what's your favorite thing about boondocking? That I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> I'm just as cheap as I can be. Yeah, I'd say for me, it's it's usually I can get uh, some peace and quiet in nature. More uh, that's than... it. It's roomier. Yeah. Campgrounds are so crowded. Yeah. Yeah, I All agree. Right. Well, if anybody has any questions about boondocking, put, put them below in the comments, and Tracy or me will answer them, right? We'll try. You betcha. Okay, so what about mooch docking? Well, mooch docking, despite being a funny term, is actually pretty common. Mooch docking is, just refers to when, as nomads, we're traveling and we end up staying in a friend's or relative's uh, driveway or side yard or wherever they got room for you. So, I guess that's actually fairly common. I've done it a lot myself. Uh, I used to do it a lot in Wyoming during the summers when I was up here, but... Oh, as to over time, all my kids have bought houses. All my, my three kids that live here, they've all bought houses. And they none of them really have room for uh, extra vehicles at this point. They all have enough vehicles of their own in the driveways. Um, and when I go out east, for example, uh, when I was out with my grandfather this winter, I stayed at, at partly at their place, uh, mooch docked into their driveway. Also, I uh, stayed at my brother and sister-in-law's farm for a bit. Uh, again, mooch docking in their driveway so uh, it just refers to parking in somebody's place you're visiting somebody and you're parked in their driveway or again wherever they have room for you on the property you may or may not have any hookups or utilities so a lot of times it is also dry docking um, or may you know maybe they have electricity for you at least but that's moose docking and and I would say a good percentage of the nomads that I know uh, at least part of the time, at least sometimes each year, they end up moose docking during their travels. You know, maybe they're down somewhere warm for the winter, and then they go north and visit family, and then they can stay in friends and family's properties while they're visiting. Okay, didn't they do a great job? Thank you, guys. And Robert, that was an awesome uh, definition of mooch docking. And that's actually what I'm doing right now while I am filming this. I am at my friends Val and Greg's home. By the time you see this, I'll be gone. But I am currently mooch docking. So I put my glasses on so I can look at my notes. And I just want to say thank you to my friends again for helping me out. Stanley, first of all, described urban camping. 
and he gave some examples of where that might be. So really follow the guidelines that he gave you and urban camping is not really camping at all. Some other examples might even be rest areas that are in town. One of my favorites when I'm traveling is I go through El Paso. There's a rest area right in town. Truck stops that are in town. Really urban camping is in town with approval and not really camping at all, like Stanley said. All right, so two, dry docking that Robin talked about, dry docking, dry camping. And like she said, that's usually at a campground. Some people consider it boondocking because you're not necessarily hooked up to amenities. Usually dry docking means just that, that it's a campground like Robin described with a picnic table and everything. And you can not only find those like out on public lands, but in city parks, county parks, state parks, national parks. Um, they're just, they're really everywhere. And even some RV parks have dry docking available. So always check if you're wanting to say save a few dollars on that. So dry docking, some people say is boondocking, but it's in a campground, that's really your terminology, dry docking. And then Tim did a great job on covering stealth camping. He gave you some things to be aware of and uh, uh, things not to do. For me, I don't enjoy stealth camping because it is trying to be somewhere where you you might uh, not should be. And I know that a lot of people abuse it. So I have issues with stealth camping, but it does serve a purpose. Twice I have had to stealth camp. It is when I could not get reservations and I couldn't travel any further because I was tired and I could not find a place to stay. And I stayed in between hotels. Uh, one time I, it was um, on the street right outside of several hotels and I was parked right in a bunch of 18 wheelers. And another time, was, and that was in Texas, and another time was in Colorado, same thing. I And this were in, when I was in my van. I lived in Fancy Free for five years. And again, was between hotels. Uh, I got there too late to go to my friend's house, and I couldn't find a place to stay, and I just slept for a few hours and in the parking lot between hotels. I do not enjoy stealth camping, and I recommend that you use that as your least viable option, if at all possible. And then fourth, Tracy did such a fun job while she was sewing of explaining actual boondocking. Now, again, all of this could be considered boondocking because you're not hooked up to any amenities. But boondocking to me and to most of the people that I know that are out here full time is when you are on, you're doing dispersed camping. You're nowhere near amenities or um, you're, you're just out and about using your solar, using, uh, you know, uh, fresh water. And you pack, like Tracy said, you pack in, pack out, carry in, carry out, and you uh, leave no trace. That is my biggest thing for dispersed camping or what is known as boondocking. The other things that I want to say about that, and, and thank you again, Tracy, for doing such a good job, is that it's dispersed camping, but you're still supposed to stay in an established site. In other words, you don't go out and you don't run over brush and you don't create your own campsite by clearing or doing any of that. They want you, even though it's dispersed boondocking camping, they want you to usually stay in an established site. And you can't just go anywhere. Um, you know, everybody always says that there's a ton of public land out here. And you can just pull over and camp anywhere. Well, that's not true. First of all, a lot of the public land is not even accessible. It might be fenced off. It might not have roads. And you're not supposed to create your own. You need to check with the local authorities. And we'll talk about that in a moment. And... Um, when you do get there, you can't do just anything you want because it's public land. Um, it always amazes me that people are like, it's public land, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. For example, the National Forest Service is under the Department of Agriculture. The BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, is under the Department of Interior. And then you have Corps of Engineer, and you have state trust lands, and you have all kinds of public lands. But they all have their own rules, laws, regulations, and guidelines. And it's up to each of us when we are going to be boondocking or being um, dispersed camping. 
It is especially up to us to make sure we know what those rules, laws, regulations, and guidelines are and to follow them. And like we talked about, there are terms. I have seen terms of stay as little, and again, on public lands, for as little as three to five days. So always check where you're going. And also, I recommend the app U.S. Public Lands that's put out by Technomedia because you can be on public lands and you zoom in on that and there might be a white dot that you're actually camped on well that means that they have leased it out or that they have sold it and that's actually private land and sometimes that can be checkerboarded it can be like you know colored for public land and then white colored for public land and then white and you have to make sure that you are actually even though you entered public lands that you are actually stopped on public lands before you do your camping. So I help I hope all of that helps and like I said and then and then number 5 that we covered was mooch docking. Let me know what your favorite kind of camping is and if you have any comments below I would appreciate it. If you have any questions, let us know and one of us will get back to you or maybe several, who knows. And uh, just know that it's this is a wonderful life I get so excited about this uh, topic, about terminology, because it is was new to me when I started off out here in 2015, and I know it's, it's uh, new to a lot of newbies, and even old-timers kind of disagree sometimes on this terminology, and it's all good. This was just a guideline for the terminology that, as we know it, and let us know what you think and if you found this helpful. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you down the road. Keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm.